What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Monday, April 15th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, wind farms are useless. That's according to the Duke of Edinburgh. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> hilarious. Next up, investors bet further rise in U.S. gas prices. As always, the consumer takes it in the drive through Next up, EVs head for junkyard as mechanic shortage inflates repair costs. Talk about second order effects there. Ruh-roh. Next up, the largest renewable energy project in history fails. If only only desert is left and we have lost $2 billion, a little stew import in there at the end, but I absolutely love it. A pretty crazy story out of uh, California. And then finally, water scarcity and clean energy collide in South Texas. Stu will then toss over to me. I will quickly cover what happened in the oil and gas markets this week. And a lot of crazy stuff going on with the uh, the Iranian drone attack on Israel that was effective, that wasn't effective, where prices are going to open here in a bit as we record this sat- uh, Sunday afternoon. Not quite sure, but all I know is it's going to be a crazy, crazy Monday as you listen to this. We also saw rig counts drop on Friday. Um, a, an interesting ruling from the Biden administration raising the amount of royalties and uh, leasing costs for for uh, wells drilled on federal land. And then finally, a really interesting Reuters note that actually dropped on Thursday but didn't get enough coverage as I thought it would. Abu Dhabi National Oil Company considered acquiring BP following major purchases by Exxon and Chevron. We will dive into all that and a bag of chips, guys. As always, I am Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley, who is back off assignment. Excited to have you back. Where should we lead off? Hey, let's set up with our buddy with a Duke of Edinburgh, man. Wind farms are useless, says the Duke of Edinburgh. I did not see this one coming out of the closet. No, the Duke of Edinburgh has made a fierce attack on wind farms, describing them as absolutely useless. Michael, there's some quotes in here that are nuggets. When uh, as born Wilmar of in- uh, Infinity, uh, which builds and operates gas turbines, introduced himself to the Duke at a reception in London. He found himself on the wrong end of a outspoken attack. Quote, unquote, let's, let's listen to this. He said, they were absolutely useless, uh, completely reliant on subsidies and an absolute disgrace. <laughs> he said, I was surprisingly surprised by his frank views. <laughs> Holy smokes. Go, I mean, go. What's what's funny is you consider the British monarchy as somebody who's going to kind of toe the political. Oh, yeah. Line, per se. They're not necessarily going to go out on a limb and be making all of these quote unquote crazy accusations yeah. like they did now. You're right. I did not expect this. And he went all in on this. And not oh, he just did. not yeah. just offhand. He said this with an interview in the Sunday Telegraph. Oh yeah. And and so they're uh they're prominent and he also goes in here and goes uh, Prince Philip, however, said he would never consider allowing his land to be used for turbines, which can be up to 410. And he also bemoaned their impact on the countryside. Uh, he said uh, the the journalist said, basically, I suggested to him to uh, put him on his estate and then you can stay away from the estate, young man. Holy smokes, what a jerk. No wonder the Duke went nuts. Uh, I think the Duke had been hanging around the picture of John Wayne, the Duke over my shoulder. That sounds like a John Wayne kind of quote. Yeah, I won't say anything in fear of getting us banned. Let's move next. Oh, no, I I loved it. Uh, but anyway, I loved his quotes. Uh, shout out and positive to the Duke. All right. Investors bet on further rise in the U.S. gasoline prices. This was a great article, and I got to go look where it came from. It was an absolute great one. Zero this is our Reuters. Reuters, but zero. I got it off of our feed off of uh, Zero Edge. 
and mm -hmm. fund managers are have betting heavily that gasoline prices will rise further throughout the remainder of the year. Inflation adjusted prices have risen from a, a recent low of $3.22 in January, but are still below the recent highs of $5.42 in June. But we are coming in uh into the high end of the season and they have some really good uh thing on inventory inventories are at a four uh five million barrels down two percent uh uh given a take half a percent below the prior 10 year season average so and we have refineries coming offline so when you take a look at downstream and refining these numbers this article was fabulous yeah, we, we love ourselves some good John Kemp. Um, I love this chart here that he that he he created here, uh, Miss Producer. We don't want to if you can throw this up. This is gasoline supplied to U.S. domestic markets and exports 29, uh, 1990, excuse me, to twenty twenty four. This is a million per day. Uh, this is a million barrels per day in annual average. You can see the split between domestic mm -hmm. sales and exports. You know things have been trending upward. COVID hits, we see a big drop, and now that same trend has continued to pick back up. So the point of, I think, what this chart and what John Kemp is showing in this article is that as we get farther and farther away from COVID, we're going to continue to see gasoline supplied to the U.S. domestic markets continue to rise, which means fuel stocks, Stu, as you mentioned, are going to continue to be hampered if we do not keep them up. We've been selling the SPR. We're now selling fuel stocks. You know, it. This comes down to almost a national security issue, in my opinion. Well, I want to, I want to go to uh, uh, a shout out to the EIA uh, for getting caught again. Uh, they really got busted here this past week uh, for putting out fictitious numbers again. So, uh, and then the Biden administration got caught again on their jobs numbers. You and I kind of talked a little bit about it, but in those job numbers, 70,000 of those numbers were government jobs. And then the lion's share of the part-time job, almost 70% of the jobs were to illegal aliens. So the Biden administration has really gotten uh, in trouble for numbers. Yep. So let's go to the next one here. Michael, this is an absolute hoot. EVs head for junkyard as mechanic shortage inflates repair costs. Holy smokes, Batman. There's some nuggets in this article, Michael. And that is, uh, I'm, I'm about to break my arm for the podcast listeners. I can't even pull my hand up over my shoulder. I'm so sore from working in the garden, but I am patting myself on the back as best I can, because this article says insurance companies are driving the price of uh, EVs uh, through the roof. And I think that it's not going to be the government. It's not going to be demand. It's not, gonna, it's going to be the insurance companies that are going to take them out let's go through some of these numbers here um fewer than 10 percent of the uk's 236 auto mechanics are qualified to work directly on the ev batteries or their cases uh while many technicians can perform less demanding tasks the most challenging repairs require extra training and michael the batteries you get a crack a little water on one and they become a fire hazard. <laughs> I love this. Uh, it, it, a trainer. Uh, this is a quote from Darren Noddington. He's an AA trainer, not alcohols anonymous, but uh, um, another, <laughs> another type. He says, quote, it's instant death on these systems. Oh yeah. Um, I, I do want to give a shout out to my father-in-law. He was in West Texas um, uh, this past week and he did. There are no chargers. He had to park his car, walk a mile and a half back to the, you know, fr uh, from the, ho to the hotel yeah. and then go back a mile and a half. He didn't have a Uber and didn't have anybody around. And so, you know, if you're two, three miles away from a, uh, and he's 85, you know, and yeah. he loves his Tesla, but. Gee. No, Teslas are cool. I think it's interesting. Miss producer, if you don't mind Throwing up this chart here, it looks like it's from Bloomberg. UK sales of battery electric cars have gone stagnant. You see, no one's buying them anymore. No, they can't. And uh, that big spike in December of 2022 
Is that tax incentives? Is yes. that does that oh, weave in some yes. tax incentives that they're trying to squeeze out in the UK before the end of the year? Yep. And now tax incentives because of the Biden administration and the way they've been defining in a moving target on tax incentives, A, you got to make X number of dollars, which eliminates most of the middle class now. And then most of the cars may or may not have gotten much of a tax deduction. I, I covered a little bit of that earlier, and it it's crazy how stupid they are. They want to sell these things. And then China. Let me just say this about China. China is dumping all of their inventories and they're building fabs in Europe. They're building a fab in Mexico and they're going to be, excuse me, whore dogging like a son of a gun. Uh, this is a family show, but a whore dogging, we can say, right? So um, they're going to be really moving those things out like uh, people on the street. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's they, they're able to produce a low uh, a quality piece of equipment, theoretically, at a lower cost on the market. People are going to flock to it if they are. If you do want to get into the EV business, you're either buying a Tesla or you're buying a Chinese made product. It, right. There's really no in between. That's really what it's come down to at this point. And I believe in Elon and I believe in the Teslas. And I think that they're great for those people that can afford them. Anyway, let's get rumbling on down the road here. Uh, largest renewable energy project fails. Only the desert is left and we've lost $2 billion. The second order of magnitude of this failed event of these solar panels, Michael, is holy smokes, Batman. Um, there's a bunch of trash out there and I bet nobody cleans it up. Um, aliens are going to do some archaeological digging on this and go, let's see pyramids solar panels what happened between that a renewable energy project uh, that promised to change history failed loss of two billion dollars and it was uh because in morocco two billion eight hundred megawatt normeld power plant was scheduled to start operating but construction has not even begun uh, they've still got a lot of solar panels out there right now, not even getting into the main areas. Uh, renewable project due to internal problems. Uh, they couldn't even attach it to the grid in, in the main area. There is more of a liability. Listen to this. Nor Quasante uh, helped Morocco on the world map for large-scale renewable energy projects but took a closer look at operating costs and maintenance issues show that the plant is more of a liability. I mean, you know, this just sounded like something that was going on in California. So I apologize for shaming them in the intro, but what this in what this shows is that even around the world, the grid isn't ready for this type of stuff. It's not and just the U S covered this in my solo show last week. There's some things that we can do here at home to increase the grid, but we're unwilling to do that. They're, they're not even willing to do that overseas. So if you can't in, in places like, you know, places like Morocco, there's less red tape than the United States. Somebody oh. wants a solar farm build, you know, the right people. Oh, you'll just, you'll get that approved. So the fact that they can't get it approved with zero red tape means nobody's getting it. Oh, absolutely. But, you know, you sit back and take a look, Michael, uh, with my new experience of putting in uh, backup generators, the solar, wind, and everything else, I've enjoyed learning. And there is applications for solar. I don't want to dog 100% of solar, but it's a, it's, it's a different beast. It's for when the Iranian drones make it over the U.S. That's when uh, oh. solar comes into play. Oh, uh, speaking of that, hey, our hearts and prayers go out to everybody in Iran and uh, excuse me, Israel. And uh, they got attacked this weekend. And I am so thrilled that the Iron Dome was able to hold off that horrible uh, thing. But, Michael, I got tickled at the... Uh, uh, the head of the Iranian, uh, the Ayatollah, I guess, or whatever his name is, he goes, okay, we're done. I I'm like, what? 
Yeah, I, yay! I'm happy that these they're done. <laughs> hey, I just don't want to get drafted. What's no, up? No. What's next? I don't want you drafted either. That would stink. Water scarcity and clean energy collide in South Texas. Michael, this is really pretty funny because this is a weird story. And increased water drawn slowly, solely from the uh, Nucus River system could dramatically increase the potential for scarcity, wrote Corpus Christi's director of intergovernmental relations, Ryan. I'm going to butcher his name and I apologize. Scar- uh, I'm not sure what that was. March 1st memo to the state lawmakers and it first reported the Corpus Christi caller times. A new large volume of user Nucus River will require extensive and exact monitoring to avoid increased drought. All this is over renewable uh, hydrogen and hydrogen, as you and I have talked, uh, is not easily transported. So they're going to convert it to ammonia, <laughs> which requires a lot more energy. So hydrogen requires a lot of water and a lot of um uh, energy, and then you got to have more energy in order to turn it into ammonia so you can transport it, and that's a whole different set of in- infrastructure. Uh, unbelievable. In the future, hydrogen will be used to replace diesel, said Joel Powell, director of the Energy Transition Institute at the University of Houston and a former chief scientist at Shell. They probably ran him out. Uh, I'll see that is a good jobs transition. I just don't see it, Michael. I just think it's pretty funny. Yeah, I it 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 comes down to what we talked about last week with Chat GPT. Every time you type in a little phrase, boom, fifty milliliters of water gone. So as we transition, quote unquote, into a clean fossil fuel future, what happens with water? I mean, I think that's it's been on the back burner. No one's talking about water. California's had a um, unusual higher rainfall. So I think there we aren't really talking about it. But just five years ago, everybody was on water, 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 water. So what does that mean? Does that mean that the water supply is now fixed? No, it's a it, it fluctuates yearly. But moving to this type of technology, specifically with this hydrogen, is a little weird, Stu. I mean, Letting them take the last available water supply from a South Texas, the South Texas region, not good. No. And listen to this quote. Uh, this is from Pete, uh, Corpus Christi City Council uh, City Manager Peter Zioni uh, warned that the Aviana project could increase water prices to all city users. Quote, the loss of millions of gallons of water a day will have an impact on our water supplies. To backfill that will potentially result in rate impacts to all Corpus Christi, wa- Corpus Christi water customers, I only wrote. That's terrible. Yeah, and local residents are now under water use restrictions. So again, yeah. it's you taking it in the drive through folks. Yeah, you always um, in... Uh, uh, die. I uh, wasn't die hard, it was uh, uh, lethal weapon, yeah, and never seen him, but uh, I we will uh, <laughs> all right, you're millennial, I forgot. Sorry, no problem. What else you got? That's it for me, man. Let's get off to the finance here, all right. Well, we'll do that in a bit, but first, we got to pay the bills, guys, as always. The news and analysis you just heard is brought to you by the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your energy and oil and gas news. Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business. Check out the description below for all of the links to the articles, timestamps if you're listening to us on Spotify or YouTube so that you can go ahead and jump ahead and Um, or back and listen to other segments that you want. You can also check out, again, all those links to the articles. Check out dashboard.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your data and energy news combo. Got some cool stuff coming out for that. As always, guys, www.energynewsbeat.com. Pretty interesting day this week, Stu. I mean, we saw on on, on Friday, we saw the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ get pounded, mainly due to the fact that um, CPI numbers, 
from earlier this week came out and just absolutely sort of obliterated what any good um any good momentum the market had going forward you know with that higher inflation data there's probably a chance we see fewer u.s rate cuts as soon as the economy will continue to stagnate rates will be high um you know in terms of what happened on friday for oil prices we actually saw about we did see a one percent increase mainly off the back of what was announced on Friday was what Iran was preparing for an attack, which ended up happening this weekend. We also saw our favorite organization, uh, the International Energy Administration, cut their 2024 demand growth view, which is absolutely um, interesting considering some of the stuff that we've been talking about here. But the IEA goes ahead and does that. Um, But again, it doesn't have much, much to do with where prices went as we saw this. you know, we saw president of Lipow Oil Associates, Andrew Lipow, he said in the Reuters article, the main focus is on whether Iran will retaliate against Israel. The answer is yes. The question is, I think now is markets about to open here in, in, in an hour or so. Still, I think the question now becomes where do prices go from? I think we're I think we're going to see a mixed reaction on prices. I don't expect to see. I don't expect a, I don't expect oil to be trading at $90 WTI by the time this opens. Currently, we have oil prices sitting at 65 66 Brent oil at 90 45 Do I expect you know, a $5 increase in the price of oil? No. Um, I think it's going to depend on what happens, I think, in the overnight session based upon where do traders feel like Israel will do in response and whether or not this could be a sustained. I mean, I don't think anybody knows. It's an extremely fluid situation. Um, the, you know, it's the only yeah. fluid, the only fluid part of this, in my opinion, is going to be the hoodies and the blowfish, so to speak, in Somali pirates in the Red Sea, because they, uh, the Iranians did, uh, capture another cargo ship. Mm-hmm. So, um, how much of it people are already got used to not, or to going around, uh, on all these kinds of things, but there are some additional sanctions going on to Russia in critical minerals, and the Biden administration is pretending to be tough on Russia. So the, all of that mixed in behind the scenes is what I'm trying to watch for. Sorry. Yeah, it's 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 going to be crazy. Um, and luckily, Stu will keep us up. You know, next to cover is is rig count. I mean, just again, surprising U.S. drilling activity continues to drop off. That's the title of the article on Newsbeat. You know, total rig count fell by three uh, week over week to 217. That's compared to 751 rigs at the same time last year. This is all according to Baker Hughes. The number of oil rigs actually fell by two. Um, natural gas rigs fell by one. Oil rigs sit at 506, which is 80, which was down 84 rigs relative to where we were last year. We also saw crude production stayed at the same level for the fifth straight week. Uh, the frack count spread, which is something that that measures the uh, amount of completion cru- crews that are uh, completing wells that are unfinished, fell for the third week in a row um, to 257, which is down 30 from the same time last year. So people are continuing to complete some of these reels. Specifically, the Permian saw one rig decrease after rising the week before the Eagle Field. Eagleford also dropped a rig. Uh, as rigs drop, prices will go up because production theoretically will go down, but you know, as prices continue to rise, we will start to see rig count catch back up with this higher oil price environment, uh, no doubt. So I think that's the it's going to be interesting to see in the next three weeks where rig counts come in. I'd expect to see, you know, five to 10 rigs throw, you know, get added here over the next four weeks. But it'll be interesting to see specifically where those rigs are, whether it's onshore Permian or specifically maybe some offshore stuff. Uh, but very interesting on what's going on um, with rig counts. You know, the uh, two more articles I wanted to cover, Stu. First off, oil and gas companies must pay more to drill on federal lands under new Biden administration rule. This this draw this is a kind of a whopper that dropped on uh, Friday uh, out of the AP. Mainly, you know, headlines read oil and gas companies will have to pay more to drill on federal lands and satisfy stronger requirements to clean up 
old or abandoned wells under a final rule issued by the Biden administration. Uh, the Interior Department went ahead and raised royalty rates for oil drilling by more than 33 percent to 16.67 percent uh, in accordance with some rules that were passed in 2022 by Congress. Um, if, if, if you're familiar with a, specifically if you've done a lot of work in New Mexico, you know that that federal leasing is about 12 and a half percent for federal drilling rights um, that had been really had been that way for over a hundred years. The other thing that they did was increase the minimum leasing bond paid by energy companies to 150,000 as compared with 10,000, which had been established more than 60 years ago. You know, this, you know, this, this already was, this is off the back of some provisions that are already being forced on an interim basis based upon the inflation reduction act or Stu likes to call the porculus bill. Um, and there's also some, or excuse me, that's the infrastructure bill. Well, there also are some provisions there. The Inflation Reduction Act is the Inflation Increasing Act, as we've talked about this at all. You know, the the new royalty rate is set and expected to remain in place until 2023, after which it can be increased. Basically, this could, based upon the Department of Interior estimates, this could account for about a $1.8 billion uh, increase in federal, in, in, in federal funding. Um, that's according to the... Uh, interior department you know i here's my thing i actually don't have a problem with either of these in between me and you Stu. i think it's i think what i'm more concerned about is that they're not allowing people to bid on these leases i actually think ten thousand dollar bond per lease is woefully inadequate to cover um uh, all of your, I mean, to be a bonded operator in the state of Texas, it's twenty five, thirty thousand dollars. Yet the Fed, the, the the feds are only charging ten thousand dollars for lease. And where again, where this bonded this bond comes in is to clean up orphaned or abandoned wells, which then get added to the orphan and abandoned list, and then end up sucking more money out because we have to go past the Inflation Reduction Act, which gives I'm us a lot of money it. to clean them up. So I'm totally okay with the increase in the bond, and I'm actually okay with the increase in the royalty rate because most every other operator is already paying 25% as a base on non-federal land. So I think the feds had some room to play with in here. Now, the only thing I'd push back on is, you know, clearly they're not going to spend the money in the right way. It's not like this money is going to go to the education system. It's not like, you know, that's why I'm in favor of, of I'm not against, you know, the, the amount of taxes that are laid upon non-federal land when you talk about ad valorem production, because all that money, state money going back into the education system. Do I trust the, the feds to actually spend this new increase in royalty rates responsibly? No, I don't. But. We, we got to do something. We're three trillion in the hole somewhere. We got we got hopefully try to do something here. So I, I do think this is a this is a, a, a an increase that maybe should have been talked about a lot more. It really came down quick as they did it on Friday. I don't think people are expecting this, but I'm going to take the opposite opinions too. I'm not totally against any of this, and it's it's just going to again as as oil prices continue to rise, companies will be able to handle this. It's when prices get low that they're starting to look at this and say, eh, maybe we don't want federal land. I'm more mad that they won't lease this acreage to us. That's the big key. Make it 100. Yeah. percent royalty you're not even leasing it to us um this there's a sister article on energynewsbeat.com uh the biden administration plans sweeping effort to block oil and gas exploration in uh alaska on the north slope the u.s set aside 23 million acres of the north slope to serve as emergency oil supply a century ago now joe biden's moving to block it what a I'm keeping well, I, know, I know you I mean, again we should be able to drill I mean un unlocking places if, if we really want energy independence if we really want energy freedom and energy security we should be attacking all forms of specifically oil and gas right now considering where prices I are you want to really lower prices and help you know hey. Saudi and Russia OPEC's putting the short squeeze on Biden they're doing that driving prices. We saw OPEC uh, confirmed that they're not going to uh, that they're going to continue to cut. We saw Kazakhstan. I think it was was it Kazakhstan came out and said they're they're sorry we overproduced. We're cutting a little bit more. They're putting they're tightening the gears on the Biden administration trying to drive prices up. So what's the only way to get more to drive prices down? Get more oil. So doing things exactly like what Stu's talking about you know, blocking off, um, developing in the North Slope, not making federal leases available does way more to hurt our 
total overproduction and, and, and overall energy security than raising royalty rates by 4%. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, you know, with the uh, U.S. being the largest oil producer now, uh, mm-hmm. the that's the only thing that is driving um, the prices being at least in held in check. And if the Biden administration would understand actually, uh, phys- I mean, excuse me, uh, uh, finance, they would understand that they would, if they turned us loose, the prices would go down to the consumers and they would say, yay, look how good we are. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely. Um, yeah, Last and then- thing I've got for us, Stu, is this is an interesting little nugget that that was dropped by World Oil on Thursday, and I think it really went underreported. Abu Dhabi National Oil Company considered acquiring BP following major purses by IOCs like Exxon and Chevron. All it says is Reuters reports that the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company, which is the UAE state-owned oil and gas company, previously um, inquired about purchasing British Petroleum. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Well, because this is a so BP is a UK company. They have a US subsidiary, BPX. I don't think either the United States or Britain would allow the UAE to purchase one of their companies. Um, I think our current administration would. So you, oh, you, you think our current administration would allow UAE to really, they're blocking all, all current mergers. We, 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 we've seen, um, Chesapeake and Southwestern get kicked back pioneer and Exxon haven't closed it. You really think in, in, in light of all the TikTok noise that's going on with the divestiture of TikTok, you would actually think they'd let the UAE come in yep. and purchase. If anything, I think Trump would do it. Nope. I think Trump would not do it. Um, But uh, I'll tell you, all you have to do is watch who goes and visits them in the UAE, just like all the politicians that show up, uh, Randy Weingarten and all the other folks, anybody that shows up in the Ukraine and comes back with millions of dollars. I have a feeling that you would see the same thing. The lobbyists would be making some very big headway into the politicians and they would let it go through. Yeah, I think we have to disagree or agree to disagree on this one. I have a feeling that the current administration would not let this happen. And I would not would want this to happen either. I wouldn't, I want, wouldn't either. I wouldn't want the UAE to actually come in and control BPX, which is one of the law, which is one of the larger let, entrepreneurs let, in the let, United let, States. I'm, I don't think me, Britain would allow it either. So let I, me de- let me defend uh, two things. Japan has bought all the way up the food chain to ship. But it hasn't gone through yet. Hey, the U.S. steel, Japan now, steel I, worker is still Would you let pending. me finish? They did buy, uh, we had Total Energies buy uh, all these natural gas plants, uh, power plants, and a yeah, French company. Then you also have Japan buying the natural gas EMP companies to supply their LNG export so they've bought the whole food chain all the way from the pad all the way through to the lng that has already happened so but but, but that, that's wildly different than the uae those are allies the french japan, and japan is are not, allies the uae isn't an ally of ours they're an OPEC. i guarantee you uh the i vote yes that it may happen according to the current one let's wait and see no, I mean, I don't think I don't think the 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 Abu Dhabi National Company could actually go through with 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 a purchase or a merger of BP, whether it was the 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 British overarching or arching company or any acquisition of BPX. But I think it's interesting that they leaked to the Reuters that they actually looked at doing this, which means there was at least some some small squiver of conversation. Somebody approved somebody leaking this to Reuters. That's what I always find interesting. Well, if the it depends on which side of the UK government uh, is in charge, and you have several government members in the United States that are very pro Middle East because they're from there, so it's the same thing. There is a new chunk of legislators in the U- UK that are from other countries. So you're right. I, so yeah, maybe it, it's UK not would allow it, but I guarantee. 
we wouldn't that BPX would not be included in that purchase. That's my I'm, bet. That's my guess. Okay. Well, I, I, you and I got a dollar bet on this bad dog. Awesome. What else should people be worried about this weekend besides potential World War Three? Well, I'll tell you what, Michael, I do not know how pricing for oil is going to go. Demand is going up. The EIA has been the IEA has been caught again, falsifying numbers. They have been come out. Uh, there is a whole new catch of the climate uh, activists that miss um, handle the data again. Uh, that's coming out. I've got a story coming out on it. They are actually manipulating the data to say that it's higher and the IEA is backing it up. And so they're manipulating the sensors. So what I'm trying to say is I don't know where the oil prices is going and hang on because there's going to be some more IEA falsification of their data coming around the corner. You heard it here second, folks. Well, we appreciate everybody checking us out. Uh, it's going to be, it's a gorgeous week down here in Texas. We hope everybody gets outside. We appreciate everybody checking us out, but we're going to go ahead and let you get out of here. Get back to work. Start your Monday. We appreciate it. As always, guys, www.energynewsbeat.com. We'll see you tomorrow, folks.